today's video is going to be focusing on ICE 2.3 and incorporating network devices such as the ASAV into ICE for network device administration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the ASA configurations um, so that we can join this device to ICE 2.3 which I have up here in the topology and then we're going to actually test the access so this is a blank ASA there's nothing on here at the minute so we're just gonna simply configure the interfaces that we have at the moment and um, then we'll proceed with the TACAS configurations so we'll start off by configuring the interfaces so interface gig03 is gonna be the DMZ. We'll set the security level to 50 for that. We'll give it an IP address of 10111 slash 24. And that's that. And then we'll go into do, 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 do. I'll tell you what, we'll jump straight into the TACX configuration because the other interfaces aren't that relevant for this um, video. So we'll jump straight in to doing the TACX configuration now. So we'll do a AAA server and we need to give it a group name. So I'll just call it TACX plus. And we're going to be using protocol TACX. And that's it. We do have a few options in here, um, but I'm not going to set them. So we'll exit back out of there and we'll do AAA server group name again, TACAX Plus. Oops. And now uh, you can see that we've got um, more options here. So we're going to start with the open parenthesis, which is so that we can define the interface as it says where the designated AAA server is accessed. So in our case, it's going to be the DMZ. So we'll do that. And then the host IP address is 10.1.1.10. And then we should be able to give it a key now. So the key I specified, I believe, was Cisco123, but we can verify this by jumping onto the ICE and if we go down to do, 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 do administration network devices which I've already added the device in here and if we do show yep lowercase Cisco 123 so yeah we can verify that okay And then we'll do AAA oops, authentication SSH console. And there's also a few, oops, that's not finished. Um, so the TACAX, the group name that we created, and we could do local fallback authentication if the TACAX server. Uh, for some reason it becomes unreachable um, so yeah because we specified the locals local as a fallback um, and we've not created any username um, it's, it's just notifying us that the local database is empty so what we'll do is we'll create a username of admin with a password of Let's just call it admin. Okay. So that should be fine now. So if we look at the other options available, you can choose to authenticate telnet sessions and also serial. So just for the purpose of this lab, we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Tacax plus fallback. Oops. Console. TACX plus fallback local. We'll do the same for serial. Okay. 
and on the Takak side on the actual ASA that should be that should be sufficient enough so what we'll do now is all I've not showed you how to add a network device to ICE it's quite straightforward so you just click add you put in the network device name along with the IP address model software versions and then you can also use um, you can group the network devices into different um, groups which is good if you're adding multiple devices and you need to um, have you know inventory on those devices and because we're using TACAX we just then click the little radio button and then you enter your shared secret into here and submit that and that's pretty much it so in terms of the rest of the things that you need to configure on ice in order for TACAX to work we need there's a few things that we need to configure um, so if we go across to work centers and overview um, we can see the there's a good overview here um, of the things you need to actually configure so moving over to if we go to administration on the system then click deployment we can see that we have our deployment nodes here I'm running the standalone and because device administration services are not enabled by default we need to enable that so to do that here it's got a little information um, icon here and it just basically tells you that the TACAX license um, is required to actually run this so what we need to do is we enable this and then we save it which will allow us to use eyes for device um, administration then what we have to do is if we go to policy elements and results you then presented with um, a good few options here so you've got TACAX command sets where you can actually um, set your commands and then you've got profiles so I created an ASA admin profile so if we click on edit on this we can see that I've given it a default privilege um, of 15 and maximum privilege of 15 you, there's also other options that you can select and you can also add custom attributes at the bottom here as well however I've left that as default and just put the um, privilege levels to 15 as it's for admin access so once we've done that and we can go across to device admin policy sets this is where you create your um, policy sets for um, TACAX so we've got default device admin as the allowed uh, protocols or sequence and if we we can see now that we using ice 2.3 we we now have this lovely um, hit counter on the policy sets which I think is quite cool um, so we can see that it's got 71 hits here so if we click on view it'll take us actually into the policy set and then we can view the authentication and authorization policies so if we expand authentication policy and we've got the default in there and we can see that it's using um, all user ID stores so this is using all user identity stores so it'll be using any identity store that we actually have configured however we're just using the local one so that's where it'll get picked up and we could see that in the TACAX logs later and then we've got the options below in case uh, authentication fails if the user is not found and if the process fails so if we then expand authorization we can see that I've set up an ASA access um, policy for authorization and this is saying that if the device equals 
to all device types because um, we've only for testing um, we've only got the one ASA added then we're going to give it the command sets which I just showed you of all commands and it's going to use a shell profile where where I showed you with the uh, privilege levels it's going to use the ASA underscore admin shell profile so I should get privilege 15 okay and that's pretty much it so if you're doing local authentication what we need to do is we need to make sure that the users are added so this is where you add users administration identities and you can add local users to ice so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and we'll add a new user so let's just say synac password types for internal users and this is the login password for um, devices so we'll call we'll give this one um, let's give this one Cis uh, Cisco or lowercase one two three and the same with the enable password um, and that's it I mean you can you've got the option here to add it to user groups however I've not configured any of they're just the default groups that are there so we won't use that and we should just be able to sub uh, uh, da, 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 da. So the password policy is not allowing all lower cases. So what we'll have to do is Cisco one two three with a capital C. And then we'll try again and we'll submit that and there we go. We can see that this user Synac has now been added. So what we'll do is we'll go across now to the TACAX live logs and ignore these and um, these are from previous um, sessions and what we'll do now is we'll test the user before actually logging out of the device we'll actually test the um, we'll test the credentials of the user synac that we've just created so we'll do test triple uh, A authentication and it's TACAX plus username was Synac password was Cisco one two three and we'll enter then the IP address of ICE, which is 10.1.1.10. And we can see that the authentication is successful. So if we do a refresh mm -hmm. on the live log, mm -hmm. we can see that that's actually being captured on the log as successful. So we can see that it's past authentication, username, the network device name, network devices IP address is included and the other attributes um, associated with with that session and it gives you a breakdown here of the steps and that's it you're all you're all done so we should theoretically be able to end this session log back in with let's say for instance sin with the password of Cisco 123 there we go and as simple as that that's how easy it is to add devices to the identity services engine from Cisco and that's all for now so thank you for watching